Hello, this is Editing Felicia here with an intro. So, for the next little while, you're going to see a bunch of old content. And I filmed a bunch of stuff in January and then never got around to editing it. And then I felt like it was too late. But then I didn't feel like I could move forward with new stuff because I still had this stuff on my brain that I wanted to get out. And so what's happening now is that I just am stuck in this cycle. So I'm just taking those videos, I'm going to edit them, and I'm going to put them out. So this is a video that I filmed on January 22nd, and I talk for a very long time. And you can feel very free to just watch the beginning, and you will get the gist. <laughs> and uh, basically talking about my only reading goal for the year, a uh, project that I'm doing. And then I just end up taking you through every single book on uh, my TBR shelf that's related to this project. So, yeah, you can watch it or not. Uh, but yeah, so you will be seeing more content from me. It's all going to be old and catching up. But you know what? It's what I have to do to move forward to get past this like video block that I've had. So yeah, enjoy. There's some cool glare on my glasses but that's fine right hi friends I'm Felicia welcome here so different angle for me uh first video of the year happy new year it's January 22nd today I feel very rusty at this I also feel like you're really far away so in this video I'm going to talk about the only reading goal that I have for this year and that goal is to clear out all of the YA books that I have on my TBR shelf. All right, so for a little context backstory for this project, I joined booktube in September of 2014, I think. I'm not totally sure because, because I uploaded my first bunch of videos to a different channel and then I didn't know that you could change the names and I wanted to change the name of my channel so I started a new one and I didn't know that you could change the name so I'm a little iffy on the official date don't remember but it was I think September of 2014 because my cousin got married on Labor Day weekend and I'm pretty sure it was Labor Day weekend or it was August long um, but either way, and I filmed my first book haul, my first video, the weekend of his wedding. Anyways, so August or September, okay? Back then, I mean, I really fell into the book outlet trap, just buying everything that was on book outlet and just buying tons of books that I had only like maybe heard in passing, heard someone mention and just buying tons and tons of books. And most of it was YA because that's what, uh, back then I was reading about 50-50 young adult, adult. And now, seven and a half years later, I am, how old am I? I'm 33. <laughs> and I am just not reading YA anymore. I feel like it needs to be really special for me to actually want to read it because I just cannot give a care about <laughs> uh high school problems <laughs> I just can't do it and so I have been frustrated with this backlog of YA books on my TBR shelf that I just am not reaching for because that's not my phase of life anymore and I'm not saying that I'll never read a YA book again but I don't think they need to live on my shelves I think if I'm going to read it I can acquire it from the library or something right so my TBR shelf starts here down so it's one two three four shelves on my bookcase you can't see it and what I've done is I have collected all of the YA books and middle grade I only have a few unread middle grade books that I own I put them all on the shelf and by the end of 2022 if I have not read these books I'm getting rid of them so that is my challenge it is the great YA breakup of 2022 so I'm breaking up with YA it's not you it's me it's me so pause for a sip of coffee so this is already pretty 
pared, pretty pared down. I've already taken nine books off of this pile because what I have done this morning, and what I have been doing for weeks, is... I've made, I've added all those books to an exclusive shelf on Goodreads and I've been going through it and just kind of examining what I want to read. I have also added all of the YA books from my Kindle to that list, but I am unsure if I'm going to count those. As it stands, I think I have about 80, 80 books altogether with this shelf and my Kindle. Um, on this shelf right now is just over 30 books. I already forgot. I counted it this morning and I forgot. So what I did this morning is I took all these books, I put them on the floor, and then I told myself, pick 20 of these books that you can keep. And so I picked 20 that I, the, the first 20 that jumped out at me, and then I looked at what was left, and there were still some that I was like, yeah, I would still like to read this. So that eliminated a few. And then I was like, that's not enough. Gotta, we got to be ruthless this year. Because they may not be bad books, right? Like all of these books, at some point, I did have interest in them, but I'm not reaching for them. So what's the point of them living here if I just would rather read something else. And so I asked myself, which of these books am I actively looking forward to reading? I took each of the books and I was like, yes, I'm excited to read this book. And so if there were some that I was just like, well, yeah, I'll read it, but I may probably would only give it three stars, maybe, then it left. And so my other problem that I'm having, especially with just with all of them, is that out of all of these, I have a couple, I think I have three middle grade books, and those are good. I'm going to read those in March. That'll be fine. The rest of these, out of all of them, only one of them, only one of them is a standalone. They're all duologies or trilogies or seven book series. Okay, I have Throne of Glass on here, so... That's terrifying. So I'm committing to a lot of books and if I don't own them, like the continuations, am I going to seek out the other books and still read them? Am I going to read them all? What am I doing here? <laughs> There's lots to think about and I'm kind of processing this with you and I'm sure it will kind of change throughout the year. I have to read all of these books by the end of the year or get rid of them. So it's going to be harsh. It's going to be ruthless. Um, if you see your favorite book on here or see me unhaul it, sorry. So what I've, st I've started, I've started one book. So my first one is Renegades by Marissa Meyer. So I'm listening to this on audio. I only own this book. I did a Secret Santa booktube exchange a few years ago, and this is one of the books that I got. So I'm listening to this. I'm super into puzzles right now, guys. I kind of get obsessed with puzzles every winter. <laughs> so I've been working on a puzzle and I've been listening to the audiobook, so it's pretty fun. But yeah, I've got it from Overdrive and the rest of the series is available that way. So I think I will finish this. So this is the first one that I'm reading. Do you want to see some of the books that I, you want to see in Unhaul? I love to watch Unhauls. So I'm going to show you my unhaul. So the first one that I'm unhauling is The Thousandth, the thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. I won this in a giveaway uh, from Indigo on Twitter years ago. This is a trilogy, so I don't want to find out find books two and three. I read the first chapter and the world is kind of interesting, but then at the end of the chapter there was something revealed that I was like, no, I, no, don't want to. So, gonna get rid of that one. The next one is Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac by Gabrielle Zevin. And I remember this being, and I haven't heard anyone talk about that other book. This one, I remember when I started booktube, was really popular and lots of people loved it. It was, at the time, it was Ariel Bissett's favorite book. I don't know if she still feels that way. But I just really don't want to read it, so... The story might be interesting, but I could probably find an adult book 
that has a similar plot, right? So I don't need to read that one. The next one is Unexpected Everything by Morgan Madsen. This is gonna hurt some people. Morgan Madsen is very beloved. I like her writing, but I read Since You've Been Gone last summer and the story was okay, but I just don't care about teenagers doing teenager things. So I will be getting rid of this one. Not that I don't like Morgan Madsen, I just don't care. So like part of the problem with this is that this is a lot of money and even though most of these books came from Book Outlet it's still a lot of money that I've spent and so I'm dealing with that. <laughs> but most of these books I've had for five, five to seven years. So I can't cry over money that I spent seven years ago, right? Like it's gone. So I learned the lesson. I've grown and changed. Could have been doing drugs, I guess. Instead, I'm just buying books that I'm not gonna read. <sighs> so this one was a gift. The other one was a giveaway win. This was from Book Outlet, it's not too much. This one hurts a bit. This is Unplemished by Sarah Ella. I pre-ordered this. I bought this brand new. This one hurts. Again, this is the first book in a trilogy. I am uninterested in reading a trilogy. I don't want to start all these trilogies. I don't want to make myself do it. All right. The next one is Madly by Amy Allward, which is also published now as The Poison Diaries, and her name is Amy McCullough. I think I heard a few people talk about this and uh, when, it came, when it came out and they liked it, but I just uninterested. This was another book out one. This is a duology, um, Starflight and Starfall by Melissa Landers. And it's sci-fi. And you know me, I love sci-fi, but there's also tons of adult sci-fi that I would like to read. Do I need to read a duology? This duology, when I could, for example, start reading the Expanse series, you know? So yes, this might be fun, but there's so many other books that I would rather be reading. And these are also both uh, book outlet. Then I have uh, The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger by Renee Audier. And these are both also book outlet. I feel kind of conflicted about this one, but I just don't, th like I, the premise of it is cool, but I just don't feel excited about it. So this is on the pile as well. I mean, with any of these, if you've read them and you gave them four or higher stars, tell me. If it's less than four, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> but if you really think that I would like them and I should read them, I might give it a second chance. This one, this last one for the pile today, this last one hurts me as well. Armada by Ernest Klein. I bought this new, brand new, and it hurts me because I really did love Ready Player One the first time that I read it. The second time I read it, I didn't love it as much. It was one of those experiences. And then this one, when it came out, people didn't love it. They felt like it was just kind of the same as Ready Player One. And he wasn't doing anything original with this. And I just feel like I'm done with Ernest Cline. Like, I'll, re I'll keep Ready Player One. I may read it again, but I just feel like I don't want to read any of his other books. If you've read this and it's actually good and worth reading, four or higher stars, tell me. Because I feel like I'm going to read this and I'm only going to give it three stars. So do I need to spend my time doing that? No. So those are the books that I've already gotten off of that shelf. So that feels good. It's a good start. Currently reading one. And we'll do a little tour of this. Sorry if this lighting is bad. I feel like I'm not in focus. But okay, so first I have here The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart, Middle Grey March. These, these don't count, these are for fun. These are two choose your own adventure books that I found in a little free library. And I'm just like excited to go through these. I feel like I wanna go through it with my nephew, but he's, seven. I don't know if he's old enough for this, but all right. Then I have this random assortment of 
Nancy Drew books. So I have books 3, 4, 6, 23, and 38. If I don't read these, I'm not going to unhaul them because this is also nostalgia for me. Nancy Drew was so important when I was 12. <laughs> and so I won't get rid of these. I'll still keep them even if I don't read them. I haven't read any Nancy Drew books since I was a teenager, so I would like to revisit them. I have the Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Leigh Bardugo. It's very popular and I do feel like I'm really gonna like this based on what I've heard. Chris watched the show and I refused to watch it because I wanted to read the books first. So he wants me to read them so that I can watch the show and we can talk about it. All right, I have the The Adoration of Jenna Fox, the trilogy by Mary E. Pearson. I'm keeping this because um, The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson is one of my favorite trilogies ever. And so I want to give this one a try. This one's more sci-fi. I don't really know what it's about, but I do love Mary Pearson's writing, so I want to give this one a try before I give it up. Then I have, those are all book outlet purchases. This is A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray, and I have the trilogy, and I'm 99% sure that all three of these were gifted to me by my friend Amy. I've yet to read them, but this was her favorite series, or she... I don't know if it's her favorite. She really loved the series at the time when she was reading it. We've talked about reading it together this year, so that may happen. I'm still interested in it, Amy, if you are. And this is time travel, and you know how I feel about time travel. I love it. So I would like to give these a try at least. Then I have uh, For Darkness Shows the Stars duology, Across the Star Sweat Sea, by uh, Diana Peterfriend. This is a retelling of Persuasion in space. And this is a retelling of the Scarlet Pimpernel, I think, which I haven't read, but Persuasion, you know, I love. And f quite a few years ago already, Kaylee from, what is your channel name? Luminous Libro, <laughs> I think is her channel name. I was gonna say Books for MK. That's not her channel name anymore. Gosh, you guys. But anyways, she used to do this thing called Goodreads Guru, which I think she's bringing back. Um, and she recommended these books to me in that v time when she recommended me books, when she did Go Goodreads Guru for me. So I do still want to read these. I did actually start reading this last summer or the summer before, and I just wasn't in the mood for it or it's something else more pressing. So I stopped, but I do still want to give it a try. All right, next I have Codename Verity and Rose Under Fire by Elizabeth Wine. These are set during World War II. It's been a while. It's been a minute since I've read a World War II book, but I do still really like them when I read them. And I got this one at a book sale for like a dollar, I think. Oh no, five dollars, <laughs> not a dollar. Or maybe I got, well, whatever. Anyways, and I got this from Book Outlet. So there are more books now in this series, but I'll probably just read these two. Then I have The Miles Between by Mary Pearson. This is a contemporary, so I'm unsure about it, but I'm keeping it because of the author. And that was a book outlet purchase. All right, then I have The Archived and The Unbound by Victoria Schwab. I won these when I won, what was it called? There was a booktube game show. And I forget the name of it now. I was on it with Sarah Ella and can't remember who the other person was. Um, and I won and this was my prize. And these are signed by Victoria Schwab. So that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm these, these I'm not like actively excited to read, but I'm still curious enough about them that I will keep them and give them a try. All right, then I have Shipbreaker by Paolo Bacigalupi. And this is apparently a series of like three or four books. I may just read this one. I, I think they're just companion books, so whatever. This is dystopian or post-apocalyptic, so I'm interested in this. I picked this one up at a, at a book sale, so cheap. 
like most yeah most of these I've not bought like full price so that's good apparently I'm actually unhauling the ones that I bought full price next I have Mark of the Raven by Morgan L. Bussey and I won this in a giveaway from Chantel Chantel reads all day and I know she and Holly from Lovely Day with Holly they both love the series and so I'm definitely going to be giving this one a try. I know my library has this series as well. So if I want to continue on with books two and three, my library has those. Another book outlet purchase. This is a purchase that was weird. City of Savages by Lee Kelly. I feel like when it came out, I heard a few people talk about it and it was, it sounded interesting. It's post-apocalyptic. It's the only reason why it's still on my shelf. Yeah. All right, then I have Not A Drop To Drink by Mindy, Mindy McGinnis. This is another post-apocalyptic. Um, it's like a world without water. This was from Book Outlet. Um, I'm just always checking for the remainder mark. That means it's from Book Outlet. And I read the first chapter of this one time and was super intrigued. So I know that this will be interesting. And this is a duology. I can get the second book from Scribd or Overdrive, I think, but we'll see. I feel like I'm gonna wanna read that. This is the first book in a duology. This one I bought full price. And this is like a prehistoric Pride and Prejudice retelling? I forget, but I'm, I'm really interested to read this one. So this is Ivory and Bone by Julie Ashbaugh. I didn't say that yet, but uh, this is a duology. I think I can get the second book as well from Scribd or Overdrive, so. And then I have Vincent and Theo by Deborah Heigelman. And this was a Christmas gift from Christopher a few years ago. And this is a novelization of uh, Vincent Van Gogh and his brother Theo of their relationship or letters or something. And it's won some awards. So, and they call it nonfiction, but I think it's, yeah, I feel like it's, kind of like a novelization. But anyways, Vincent Van Gogh is my number one, number one artist. So definitely going to be reading this. As much as I can with these books, if I don't hate the audiobook, I'm going to do the audiobook at work and while I'm doing puzzles while I can. I also need to listen to audiobooks while I knit. For some reason, I need to watch TV while I knit. Audiobooks are for work or for puzzles. Then I have... Until Tomorrow, Mr. Marsworth by Sheila O'Connor, book outlet. And this is for middle grade March, so I will be reading it in March. I have this super old, cool edition of Robin Hood of Sherwood Forest. The author is Anne McGovern, and I think I got this for free. And it's just uh, middle grade stories about Robin Hood. So I plan to read this during middle grade March. And it has these funky illustrations. This was published in the 60s. So kind of looking forward to this one. All right, so then I have The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. I was just given this book for Christmas by my sister-in-law. And so I feel like this kind of, oh, there's Christmas cards in here. <laughs> Listen, I really appreciate this book, but like also I feel like this writing needs to be like 10% more legible. Um, but I am excited to read this. Um, my sister-in-law loved it. So obviously enough to give it to me for Christmas. So I think I'm going to enjoy it. But for some reason, it really annoys me that like for me as someone who has written letters, exchanged mail with people from all over the world and seen hundreds of different people's handwriting. And I still find that a little bit challenging why did it get published like that? That's all I'm saying. It's not very accessible. But anyways, then I have the first two books in the Throne of Glass series. I'm really conflicted about this, you guys. So this is by Sarah J. Mass. And this one I found at the thrift store. And this one I bought with a gift card that I got for Christmas one year. This is a seven book series. And they just keep getting bigger. And I'm my library has the rest of them. So that's fine. But man, do I want to commit to a seven book series? I don't even know if I like her writing. 
So this is one that I am hanging on to because of the popularity factor. And I feel like I need to give this a fair shot because so many people love it. I don't know. It's really funny. I find it really funny how Sarah J Mass is like just getting blown up because of book talk. Hilarious to me. And then I have the Winner's Curse Trilogy by Marie Rutkowski. Rutkowski. There's no W. And these are all book outlet purchases, I think. This one I may have bought new. I can't remember. But these two I know I got from Book Outlet. This is a fantasy series. And the things that I heard about it when it was coming out made me think that I was really going to like it. So I'm going to give this one a try. I'm very curious about it. Because it's kind of political fantasy, which I really like. So we'll see. This is another one that I'm kind of hesitant. This is a duology, Magonia and Airy by Maria Devana Headley. And at first, when it came out, the first book, it was getting really mixed reviews and then they kind of turned more negative. I just became really unsure because then I started hearing more negative things about it. But I still want to give it a try because it's about uh, sky pirates. So interesting. And then this also, Christopher bought me this book for my birthday because I asked for it. Like we were at chapters and he was like, pick some books. So I picked this one. So I must have been like just really wanting to read this. And then I think I got this from Book Outlet. So and like these are beautiful. So I just feel really upset that people didn't like I feel like maybe it was kind of like a hype and then people tried to overcorrect the hype. I don't know. But I'm gonna give these a try. All right. These are the ones that I am the most actively excited to read. <laughs> Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. And this is like a companion duology to the Remnant Chronicles. So I'm just really excited to read these and I think I will love them. So I think I got both of these from Book Outlet. I think I did. They don't have the marks though, but I'm pretty sure that's where I got them. I may have bought this one new. I can't remember. It doesn't really matter. I don't know why I've bothered to tell you that for every single book, but the last book is The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson. I have to read it. Christopher's read it and loved it, and he wants me to read it. And I thought he read it like when I bought it five years ago, four or five years ago. This is when he read it, anyways. And I thought, oh, maybe Brandon Sanderson will continue on with it by then. No. What a jerk. <laughs> so that is the tour of my YA shelf. What I have done is I have put all of the titles on scraps of paper. Um, I've also put my Kindle books um, in here as well, but I'm not as concerned about those. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly my, if my priority is all of the YA books or just these. My priority is these and I'm unsure what I want to do with my Kindle books, but I, it's still January. So I feel like I have some time to figure it out. So this jar has the titles of all of the books here and on my Kindle. But if it's a series, I've only put the first book title in here. And so if I pick that, then I have to just read the rest of the series until it's done before I would pick another one. But I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this. At first I was really excited I was going to do it, but I feel like I might only use this if I am not immediately drawn to one of these books. So we're still evaluating the TBR jar, even though I made it. It's just, it's just a pasta jar. It's fine. Um, yeah, so we're evaluating the TBR jar and we're evaluating Kindle books. If you have any thoughts about that that would help me out, let me know. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching. This is going to be a very long video. Um, but I hope that you enjoyed listening to me talk about this project. <laughs> um, and I mean, I feel like I need to say it again and just clarify. If you still read YA and you love it, that's great. I still do enjoy it from time to time, 
but I feel like just at this point in my life I just am just just more drawn to adult books like I have three shelves here of adult books compared to my one shelf of YA and those are the ones that I've been consistently reading I think last year I probably only read five young adult books out of the 90 that I read last year so I mean we'll see oh I was gonna mention I know one author that is really dominant on my Kindle that I probably will focus on more is Melanie Dickerson um in the past before this year I had read two of her books and really liked them um she was my friend Angela's favorite author um my friend Angela was coffee and chat coffee and chapters yeah um here on booktube and she passed away in 2017 2018 can't remember it was a few years ago um and her favorite author was Melanie Dickerson and so I I feel like I want to read Melanie Dickerson to honor my friend um but also so this year so far in January I have I'm on my third Melanie Dickerson book. Spoiler for my uh, January wrap-up. But uh, I've been reading her Regency Spies of London trilogy, which isn't even young adult. The protagonists are all in their 20s. So um, there's no content in there that I would object to a teenager reading, but it's technically adult books. <laughs> So I've been ripping through those, like literally starting the next one after I finished the preview, previous one, like just immediately. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with that and I've been enjoying her writing. So I know that all of the books that I have for Melanie Dickerson, I will probably work my way through those. And so the other thing, speaking of my Kindle, the other, well, should we just, I'll just get my Kindle. I wasn't going to talk about my Kindle books, but it's right here. And you know what? This video is already so long. Might as well. So I've made a collection and I can never remember how to find my collections on my Kindle for some reason. So there are 37 books in this collection and that does include like novellas that go with some of these series. So oh and so I'll just quickly take you through this. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this if this is even worth it. Is it worth it? I don't know. But we'll just quickly go through these. All right, so we have The Crown and the Arrow, The Mirror and the Maze. And those are novellas for um, The Wrath and the Dawn, which I've decided not to read. So those can get out. Um, I have Thunder by Bonnie S. Calhoun, which was a free Kindle download. And it's post-apocalyptic. So I have to try it. Then I have, um, I think book one is Insurrection and Incomplete by Katie Carter. And these are the first two books in a trilogy and I won them in a giveaway that my friend Amy did um, and Amy really loves them so I'm gonna give them a try and see the downfall that I had with my Kindle for so many years book outlet was bad for this I used to subscribe to this newsletter I think it was called book hub or book bub or something and every day it would send you books that were free or like 99 cents or $1.99 on Kindle and so I would download all these books for free and you know whatever so thunder was free um then i have walk on earth a stranger by ray carson that one was like a dollar or two dollars um i do also have some neck alley books on here from when i still did neck alley i don't do it anymore like i just deleted my neck alley account because i just got so behind with all of these books that i didn't know if i wanted to read so I just deleted it to take the pressure off but I do still have these books on my shelf <laughs> and like if I read them and write a review on Goodreads and talk about them on my channel then that's still good right <laughs> if I just have them and never read them that's bad right <laughs> I don't know I'm trying to justify it so I have um Breakwater by Catherine Jones Payne it's about mermaids can't bring myself to delete it then I have The Glass Magician and The Paper Magician by Charlie and Holmberg those are all from Neck Alley. Um, then I have Immortal Song by Megan Crew. I paid for that one. And then I have by Melanie Dickerson, A Beautiful Pretender. And then this one I read already, A Dangerous Engagement, which isn't YA either. Actually, that's what I'm currently reading. I have 25% left. 
Then I have this is the Fairy Tale Romance Collection by Melanie Dickerson, The Golden Braid, The Huntress of Thornbeck Forest, The Noble Servant, A Princess Spy. And those are all in her Hagenheim series. There's another series and they're like intertwined. I'm not totally sure how they work. Then there's a Spice Devotion, which is the first Regency Spies of London book of a Viscount's Proposal, which I've already read. Second Regency Spies of London. So I have all those Melanie Dickerson books because this one has five books in it. So we're good. And I did pay for all of those. Rebel of the Sands by Elwyn Hamilton paid. Um, and like none of them were full price. Just when they go to like one or two dollars that's when I buy them but still it's still money Golly. the master magician by Charlie and Holmberg I paid for that one um then I have the queen of the tearling invasion of the tearling by Erica Johansson that was a really popular fantasy series for a while and I can't get the third book from somewhere um these broken stars by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner I just have this one I paid for it I'm uns this is one that I'm not sure I will read, but we'll see. <sighs> this was a free one. Remembrance by Michelle Meadow. It's time travel. Uh, the Mermaid Sister by Carrie Ann Noble. Mermaids paid for it. Among the Nameless Stars and The First Star to Fall. Those are free novellas to the, that series by Janet Peterfront that I showed you. <laughs> the Body Electric by Beth Revis. I paid for that. Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rose. This is the first book in like a six book series, I think. And... I paid for it and I don't know where I'm going to get the rest of the books if I like it and want to continue. So I have Brooke and Roar and Live. Those are novellas in the Under the Never Sky series by Veronica Rossi, which I actually have in here because I want to reread it because when I read it the first time, the only time, I absolutely loved it and I never went around to reading these novellas and I would like to reread that series and I hope that I still love it. It's post-apocalyptic. Next I have Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. I paid for that one and that's another one that I'm not sure I still want to read but it's still on here. Um, I have Clockwise by Lee Strauss. Time travel. First book in a series. Got it for free. I have Tent City by Kelly Van Hall and this is like a post pandemic book so I still want to read it. I got it for free. I think it's the first in a series. I think there's just two books. Um, Daddy Long Legs by Jean Webster. It's a classic and it was free. So, And then I have By Darkness Hid by Jill Williamson and this is the first book in a series as well and I got it for free. So yeah I guess it says 37 but then there was those five Melanie Dickerson books in one and then minus the two that I decided I'm not going to read. So if we count my Kindle and these, that's about 80 books. Last year I read 93. So if I did nothing but read these books all year, then I would read them all. But I don't think that's realistic. <laughs> and so I'm gonna, and I'm sure, like especially with the Kindle books that I got for free, I'm sure there are going to be some that I'm going to start reading and it's going to suck. <laughs> so I'm going to stop reading it. So my priority is this shelf and the Melanie Dickerson books. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts on this project of this enormity. I've been talking about it for a long time. I did not think I would uh, do like a full tour of all of the books either. If you have any thoughts or suggestions on how I can arrange this or challenge myself, make it fun to get through all of these books. I can imagine that there will be more purging. So we will see how this project is going. I definitely need some motivation for it. I don't know if you have any ideas on on how I can make this more exciting. Oh I just remembered that I have a book coming that's gonna add to this. This is also a spoiler for my January wrap-up, but I read East by Edith Pat Patu. The only book that I bought so far this year is the second book in a young adult duology that I read, the first book of. And I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna read the second book, I might as well read the second book, like right away. Time to stop talking about this project. <laughs> I think I've told you everything that I can tell you and probably as in as a 
disjointed manner as possible. Thanks for watching. I hope that you have a really good day. I hope you're enjoying what you're reading and until next time, so long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs>